When products and services go through a rebrand, it doesn't always work out. But what happens when half a country tries to do the same thing? Is it possible to rebrand a nation? Hmm. Following the American Civil War and victory for the Union, the defeated Confederate South had an important decision to make. Would it accept the Reconstruction Amendments that had abolished slavery and decimated the Southern economy? Or cling to the traditions of old? As the debate raged across the region, influential Georgia newspaper publisher Henry Grady popularized the term New South. Grady's vision was simple, to replace the South's agricultural economy with one rooted in manufacturing and industry. It would be an economy powered by both black and white workers, but crucially controlled by the wealthy white elite. Grady's idea played well with Northern investors, and in the latter half of the 19th century, the Southern economy was indeed transformed. Mining towns sprang up along the Appalachian Mountains, rail line construction boomed, connecting towns and cities where new factories produced new products while heavy investment fueled the creation of cutting-edge educational facilities like the Georgia Institute of Technology. So why does it matter? Having successfully rebranded the South as a powerhouse of industry, Southern legislators refused to accept the social and political changes brought about by the Reconstruction era. Instead, they passed new laws that segregated society and clamped down on civil rights, affecting racial minorities for decades to come. Sometimes, slogans can conceal the truth. Just how new was the New South?